Today we're going to talk about salinity in the aquarium. And fish can tolerate between 1.0 to 1, let's say, to 1.026. Corals prefer a slightly higher salinity between 1.023 and 1.026. If you're just starting out, I recommend a salinity of 1.024, which is pretty close to natural seawater. Seawater is 1.024 to 1.026. So the question is, how do you how do you measure that? How do you track what the salinity is? So we have multiple options available for purchase, and one of them is a plastic mechanical swing arm hydrometer such as this. This is water that is currently out of my aquarium and I don't know if you can see that reading. It's a very old hydrometer. It's reading 1.020. I'm tilting it slightly which I think is affecting the swing arm but it's it's 1.020. So let's look at the pros and cons of this. So the pros are it's extremely fast. You just dip this in, get the water in the uh, in this plastic area here, and then you have your parts per thousand scale on the outside, and you have a specific gravity on the inside of the measuring scale. And this mechanical arm just swings and goes to your number. Very easy to use, very simple. It's also very inexpensive. I think you can find these for less than ten bucks. Now. Let's look at the cons of this unit. As you can see, this is 1.020 based on what I said prior. 1.020 is the absolute minimum you would ever want to have an aquarium at, and this is really not a recommended reading. So are all my fish dead? Are all my corals dead? Well, the answer is no. The reason why this is 1.020 is because this hydrometer is off. It's, it's simply not accurate. So that's a major major con of these units is by itself being honest this is useless because you really have no idea what the salinity is so what you have to do is you have to calibrate this unit with a more accurate unit to figure out what the salinity is so in my case I've calibrated this and by calibration the only way you can calibrate it is by comparing to another another uh, specific gravity measure measuring tool. So 1.020 on this is really 1.024. So now that I know that this is this reads is off, I use this for very quick baseline checking when I mix salt. So once I get up to about 1.018. 1.019 then I know I'm really close so I just get it around that measurement and then I use a more accurate uh, device to to get the real number so not completely useless it does it's good for quick checks um, I can very quickly go in the aquarium dip this in and I should get a 1.020 which means 1.024 and there's that so that's that's your basic plastic cheap hydrometer. Bottom line, it's not the only tool you have. You can I, I do not recommend using this tool by itself. So what are the other tools that we have? Well the other one that you can use is a glass hydrometer. A glass hydrometer, which is not depicted, this is obviously still our plastic one, is it's accurate, it's not overly expensive, and there's really nothing wrong with using a glass hydrometer. I, I personally don't have any issues with glass hydrometer. The only con is it's made of glass, so it's fragile. It can break, so you do have to use caution when using it. But if you have a good glass hydrometer or you're interested in purchasing one, it's, it's, another, it's a good option. So what do we have for other options for measuring specific gravity in the aquarium? Well, what we have here is a refractometer. And a refractometer is a much more accurate tool than the plastic hydrometer we just shown. So what do you do with this? So what you do is you open this up. Just open this quickly. 
and you put your drops of the corium water here and you want then you close the uh, close this on it and you get an you should have a nice field of water spread out over this area and the light shines through hits that and then the the instrument is calibrated to measure the specific gravity when you look through the other end and it's really it's really clear it, it's a very good tool it's very accurate so the pros are accuracy the only con to this tool is you have to calibrate it and when you calibrate it it has to be accurate otherwise every reading from then on will be wrong so you generally do that with distilled water and they give you a little tool it's a small screwdriver here and you just turn this screw slightly based on the temperature and distilled water which has a reading of one and you set it you set that as your reference and from then on you're good to go you know you calibrate it periodically just make sure it's accurate this is a fantastic tool it's easy to use it'll last a very long time just calibrate it periodically and you're good to go you really can't go wrong with with this tool. In the big scheme of things, it's very inexpensive relative to what you're going to spend down the road on your on your tank. So as a final note, I'm going to bring in a calibration procedure guide here for this particular unit. And here you can see this is what it looks like. You have this field and you have your parts per thousand here on the right and your measurement on the left and you'll see a blue field come right over and you tell you exactly what the salinity is. So it's, it's really good, it's a great tool, it's worth it. This is the one thing you should have no hesitation about buying. And here's the fields of how it should look when you close the glass on, on the aquarium water. Should have a nice, even, consistent field like this. So those are the tools of the trade, at least the most common ones. They also have other you know, fancier units. You can get digital refractometers, which are like this, and give you a digital reading. My personal opinion, it's it's not necessary. This is very clear, very easy to use. But if if you want something high tech and you like a nice digital readout, then certainly by all means you can spend the extra money. The cost though is substantial. I mean, this is probably 50 bucks, and a digital one will definitely be over 100. So if you're just starting out and you're trying to save money, which most people are, this, this is really the unit to get.